Okay, welcome, uh, welcome to Hope Hack community. This is another exciting installment of our regular, um, regular meeting, our, bus our uh, business meeting for November uh, 18th, uh, 2021. Uh, can I entertain a, men uh, a motion please to open this meeting? So moved. Vice President Savino, can I get a second? Second. Second, and it was a tie between Trustee Masafra and Trustee uh, McDonough, so we'll go with Trustee Masafra. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Could you please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Okay, what I wanted to do is I want to thank the community uh, and staff for responding to, uh, for, uh, responding to the uh, superintendent search and remind them uh, that the survey closes on November 22nd. We've gotten a lot of surveys. Keep them coming in. Uh, we, love the, uh, we love the input. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, a really, uh, uh, it's a really terrific thing, the community getting involved like this. I did want to also point out um, uh, about, the, uh, about our... Uh, our uh, varsity football team, I know Anthony will probably touch on it as well, but our varsity football team fought a good fight uh, down, at, uh, down at Rye, uh, facing the uh, Rye Garnets uh, uh, a, few, a few weeks back in our, uh, in our playoffs. Uh, we took them all the way to overtime, and, uh, and we were right there. And uh, Rye ended up kicking after, a, after an amazing goal line stand, Rye ended up kicking a, a field goal. And uh, which propelled them into the uh, uh, into the semifinal against Somers, which they which they lost in a in a tough game. But the but the Indian football team didn't disappoint. The the boys and the coaching staff worked their tails off, and they uh, and they represented us very very well. And I'm very very proud of each and every one of the members of the team and the staff over there. So uh, congratulations to our uh, to our football team. Um, I also uh, wanted to uh, wanted to extend over to the uh, girls volleyball. Uh, they went down to Mamaroneck and fought the good fight. Uh, the Mamaroneck team was uh, was was poised and ready to go, having a home field uh, home court advantage, uh, and they were able to uh, they were able to take us in, uh, in in a in a in a few sets and in three sets. But uh, but again, the girls fought. They fought hard, and uh, they had one heck of a season. So uh, my congratulations also to our uh, to our girls uh, our girls volleyball team. Um, what I'd like to do right now is remind everybody there's a lunar eclipse tonight. Uh, we haven't seen one. It's a partial lunar eclipse. Uh, you won't see this one for another 500 years. I expect, uh, expect the, um, uh, the community to go out there. It's from 2 o'clock in the morning to uh, till about 7. Uh, and with the, uh, with the good colors happening, probably they said between 345 and, and, uh, and 630. So, uh, so make sure you go out there because you won't see it. Uh, you'll have to wait another 500 years to see it. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I won't. I won't be able to see it, but I will get up uh, and, and take a look at it. With that all kidding aside, I'd like to introduce our superintendent of schools, Mr. Anthony DiCarlo, and he's got some uh, special uh, presentations. Anthony, take it away. Thank you, President Martin. Before I introduce uh, tonight's most speakers, I just want to echo that next month at our December board meeting, we will be honoring all of our our, our teams, not only volleyball for co-championship in their league, but honoring um, our cross country team and some of their achievements and accolades that are honoring all of our whole league and sectional uh, student athletes, um, as well as our Con Ed Award winner. Basically what we're doing in the month of December is honoring our fall sports program. So we look forward to that next month. Also board, we had to uh, move our league presentation until next month also because of an unforeseen circumstance and we'll be doing that um, in December. So December will be a great evening of honoring our, our students academically and in regards to uh, our full athletic teams. So without further ado, it's with great pleasure that I present tonight um, two of our, our, our most representatives, Patrick McMahon and George Palmiero, who will come up and give you a uh, community and the board an update on how things are going on at uh, Mahone Peck High School. Gentlemen, thank you. So, 
basically this past month we had our spirit week during the week of homecoming. And basically what that entailed was uh, each day of the week we had a different team for students to dress up and kind of compete against uh, the other grades and against each other. Battle for prizes, we had gift cards, and for uh, the gift cards for um, the best dressed. And then on Friday we had our pep rally before our homecoming. And we had the cheer team perform, we had the band perform, and we also had a dance performance. And then we had the introduction of our varsity sports. And it was a great success. We had a participation throughout all our grades, and it, went, it ran smoothly, and it went pretty well. So I'm going to pass it over to Patrick now, and he's going to give a quick rundown of what we're playing the rest of the year. Hello everyone, uh, thank you for having me tonight. I'm the uh, senior class president, uh, Patrick McMahon, if you don't know who I am. And uh, we're planning to, obviously during winter, we're gonna support all of our winter teams in any way that we can do. I think the culture around the school is really very vibrant right now and active, including teachers, administration, and obviously the students, which is why during the spring, we're gonna introduce something new, including a spring, spring pep rally. Recently in the past, spring sports, you know, usually get overlooked. It's the end of the year, we're studying for Regents exams and AT exams. So we're really going to honor these spring students, and due to the widespread participation through that we had in the fall, we think that it will be uh, such a great week, and we're looking to do the same thing. Obviously, we can open it up a little bit more to theme ideas, as we did in the fall. And again, the participation was so great in the fall that we think the spring cup rally would be nothing short of excellent, and that's what we're looking to do. So thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you, John. I just want to echo what, what Patrick and George have to say, and I want to thank them, the you know, most class, senior class, junior class, and the other two classes. I, I will tell you, being outside for the pep rally and listening to not only the administration, but the teachers, the staff at the high school, it probably was one of the best spirit weeks that Maypac High School has had in a very, very long time. Uh, the compliments on this, the job that all the classes did in the hallways, the way that they participated in the theme events every single day, the way the pep rally was conducted and handled, and the most senior class doing a dance, which I thought was awesome, um, truly is a, a, a representation of Mayapak High School and the spirit and the camaraderie that goes on um, with regards to the student body. And I think a lot had to do with missing it. I think because of, of COVID and what had happened and not having that camaraderie and being a part of a, a class in a school uh, I think meant a lot for everybody to get back and be able to do that uh, as a school. So uh, to the senior class, uh, junior, sophomore, freshman, um, leaders of most, uh, thank you for all you do. It's really important. You are the leaders. You are the ones who go out and, and, and get that spirit uh, and momentum going, and, and kudos to you. So thank you once again. Okay. okay. Yep, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, That's okay. okay. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we have um, so we have a uh, can't hear it. so so we have um, uh, we have uh, con our consent agenda. We have no comments on this evening's uh, uh, consent agenda. So which will lead me down to some of the housekeeping that we have to do monthly. And uh, and please bear with me on this. But we need um, uh, so we'll have a uh, a few motions in front of us right here. So we have. The treasurer's report for September uh, 2021. Can I get a motion to accept, please? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Second? Second. Thank you, Mr. McCracken. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we have warrants for September uh, uh, 2021. Can I get a motion to accept, please? So moved. Yep. Trustee McDonough, second, please? Second. Second. Mr. McCracken, mm -hmm. very nice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a revenue status report for September 2021. A motion to accept, please. So moved. Thank you, Ben DeLulo. Second. Second. Thank you, Vice President. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have budget transfer September, for September 21. Can I get a motion to accept, please? So Trustee Masafra, second. 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 Trustee Simone, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We have extra class quarter. September for 2021 report. Can I get a motion, please, so to accept? So moved. 
Thank you, Trustee Martin. Second? Second. Oh, Mr. McCracken, all in favor? Aye. And we have our regular meeting minutes for October 21st, 2020. A motion to accept, please. I'll move. Vice President Savino, second. Second. Second, it was Mr. McDonough, trustee. No, no. Ben. Yeah. Oh, it was Ben. Yeah. Oh, so the gentleman Ben. Okay, well, there you go. All in favor? Aye. And we'll turn it over now to our superintendent of schools for his superintendent report, Mr. DiCarlo. Thank you, uh, President Mongi. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Um, there's a couple of things that I think are important, and I know that have been current events since our last uh, discussion uh, in October. And one of the first conversations, I'm sure, everybody is regards to the, ma the vaccination mandates. There are no vaccination mandates currently in the state of New York. Mayor Pack School District will not be a vaccination site. Although if you saw in the paper today, the county is gonna have a couple of sites available to people who may wanna go through um, the, that site for vaccination. What I have said since the almost beginning of the pandemic, the discussions around vaccinations are between you your family, and your pediatrician. I have not changed that stance. I will not change that stance. Nobody will be having anybody come here and put anything in your son or daughter's arm. That's responsibility, responsibility of you and the family. So please, please understand that. Uh, and I, I know that's out there and that's really, really important. I know also that's out there, and, and listen, I get it. It comes with being a part of the superintendent, and I know some people it's very difficult for them to understand. I know some people were protesting tonight to get rid of the masks and, and here's the issue. I brought this up, interesting enough, about four or five months ago, right here. And I said, we all struggle because there's no matrix. There's no, there's no number to let us know when we can get out of this. If you saw over the weekend, there was a position paper put together by the Lower Hudson Association of Superintendents. However, what's ex and really uh, upsetting to me is the media twisted what was in the letter. Because the letter says about, well, it needs to be 80% of uh, you know, vaccination rate and, and, and people being, you know, whether it's the students, whatever. That's not what that should be. It should be 80% of what, um, you know, the number of, of, of adults that we have, the staff that we have. But it needs to be based on what's the positivity rate. Okay, because if you look at it, it makes it look like, well, you can't go back to unmasking unless 80% of your students are vaccinated. That'll never happen. We know that, right? And so at the end of the day, the governor's office, Senator Harkin, Representative Byrne, we've asked, and even the county, I know the county's taken a bad rap through this, the county has said, listen, can you please look at the data statewide at all the school systems and see if there's really been any widespread of the, uh, you know, of the virus based on being in school. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, we, we've had a couple this year that we can identify that that's what happened, but it wasn't widespread, it was, self, it was contained, and that's why I made the decision to shut down classrooms and have to go to remote, and it worked out well. Um, but, you know, 96% of the other time, it's not spread. That's what we're asking the state to do, is to do a deep dive. Now I'm gonna further upset you because the DOH person in charge, Zucker, Robert Zucker, now resigned. So now you have somebody else going in there who's gonna say, I need time to get caught up on it. So here we go in this perpetual kind of cycle. So it's really important to understand that um, as we go through these next couple of months, I'm really hoping once we get by Thanksgiving and the December holidays, we get to January and things continue to go low. Right now, over the last three weeks, we've had our best numbers since school started. We're averaging single digits, um, and not a lot of individuals have to be quarantined. We've gotten by the Halloween issue from last year, which is great. We had that tick up after Halloween, and now we're going into Thanksgiving. I'm hoping, as we put, and thanks to our advocacy group, um, you know, headed by uh, Trustee DeLillo and Trustee McCracken, that we continue to put pressure on our state government officials to say, hey, listen, once we get through these holidays, if these numbers are low, let's be able to do something about the masking. So that's the update on the vaccines uh, and on the masking and where we're at. However, with that being said, we continue to listen to the public. And uh, uh, Mr. Tremblay, along with uh, 
our assistant superintendents for HR, um, and Dr. Stowell, and the, and the entire leadership group, um, we've been able to enhance, should your son or daughter have to go into quarantine or isolation, the Maypac Central School District values the input of our educational community to help us continually hone, refine, and improve our instructional programs. I want to share with you an update related to our approach to providing instructional support for students in quarantine or isolation as a result of an exposure of COVID-19. Currently, if placed in quarantine or isolation, the district provides individual tutoring for students when placed on quarantine. This requires an in-depth scheduling process that may delay students starting their homebound instruction. In an effort to improve and speed up access to homebound instruction, the district anticipates launching a homebound academy with daily established meets for students K-12 staffed by MAYAPAC teachers. The new academy approach, which we anticipate will start during the week of November 29th, should ensure students receive more timely access to homebound tutors and in most cases, they will have teachers from their own building providing the instruction. These new regular established tutoring sessions held outside of school hours will be in addition to current daily drop-in help sessions staffed by iTutor providing students live instruction tutoring during normal school hours. More detailed information, including links to established meets and detailed schedule will be provided to parents and parents or guardians if contacted about the need to quarantine or to isolate due to COVID-19 exposure. Please reach out to Assistant Superintendent Michael Tremblay of Instruction Professional Learning if you have any individual questions regarding this update to our homebound instructional support. So I want to thank uh, Mike Tremblay. I want to thank the entire leadership team. I want to thank you as parents for your feedback initially when this happened. We've made some, um, as you can see, modifications. We're hoping that this is limited, but if it is, these are the modifications that we had. So that's a very, very important update. Next update, and, and this is happening not just here in the pack, but it's happening across the country. Um, as we've had um, the last almost two years of, of students being hybrid or home instruction, um, we're trying to get everybody back into a routine. But we are seeing an increase in issues regarding discipline, um, specifically inappropriate posts on social media, specifically airdropping on social media, specifically uh, at times uh, bullying one another. Um, and we all understand about the social emotional piece of getting back to school. But we all have to remember, school is for learning. Not fooling around, not playing around, not being on social media, not snapping pictures when you're in the hallway, okay? Do we, do we, do I all understand the importance of communication with the cell phone as a parent? Yes. Cell phones need to be in backpacks and in lockers. There's no reason for them to be on a, a, a person during the school day. It only leads to issues. And we're seeing more and more of those happening, um, especially here at the middle school. So I ask parents, and listen, if you haven't seen it, please watch on Netflix the documentary called Social Dilemma. It is very, very powerful. And you know, I'm looking at faces in the audience and I see nodding and I'm preaching to the choir. You need to understand what is happening and going on in this country and what is happening to our kids. I was absolutely appalled three weeks ago when TikTok sat in Congress, sat there, and not one Congresswoman or one Congress member or senator had the nerve to hold up and say, what is actually on this platform? What they're asking kids to do, the dares they're asking kids to take. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, that they have a calendar of 10 months like we have for school, and they have things for kids to do every month? And believe it or not, kids do them. Sometimes they do them in school, sometimes they do them at home, and kids are getting hurt, they're getting themselves put in a lot of trouble, and sometimes kids die because of these TikTok stuff. So in, in retrospect, okay, I get it, in local parente, we're the parent when they come into school and they have to follow the code of conduct, but this needs to be a partnership. You know, they lost a lot of schooling. They need to concentrate as much as they can on their studies when they're in school, never mind at home. And I get it. I understand the society we're in. 
I understand the culture we ain't wearing. I, don't, I understand about social media. But social media has a place and a time. And what we're trying to see, if I wasn't doing my job and I wasn't informing the public or the board, we're starting to see upticks. And we want to work together to make sure that we provide the students with the best possible education in a safe environment and cell phones are not needed during the school day. Okay? God forbid you need to get a hold of your son or daughter, you can call the school or vice versa. Again, this is not Mr. DeCarlo saying we shouldn't have them, again, in their locker, in their backpack, come into school, shut it down, go about your business during the school day, after you, you're, you're out of school, put it back on, and go home. So, um, you know, I, I, again, I'm confident, you know, that we will get through this little bump and a little bit of an uptick in discipline and we'll be able to move forward. But, I thought it was important to let everybody know what's happening and what's going on with regards to that. As far as busing and buses, and, and again, we've had these conversations for the last several months and we know and we continue to know this is a national problem. I'm happy to say that there are a couple of things that are going to be happening on the horizon for the better. We do have a number of bus of, of applicants who have come forward which will help us um, with our routes and specifically help us with the high school, after school, um, you know, homework sessions and after school clubs. So, with that being said, however, it's, we work in a bureaucracy. Just because somebody walks in the door doesn't mean automatically they become a bus driver. They have to go through fingerprinting, they have to go through training, they have to go through 30 hours of coursework. So, in speaking with uh, Ms. Volpe, our, our, our transportation supervisor, we're looking at after the holiday in December, beginning of January, onboarding at least four more drivers. What does that mean and how does that have a positive impact? After the Thanksgiving break, meaning starting on uh, November 29th at the high school, currently, because of our priority, community and board needs to make sure we get all our kids home first. Okay, and, and, and therefore what has happened is normally the high school late bus would come about three. It's not getting there until 3.30, 3.45. So on November 29th, um, we'll have two buses that will be there at 3.15 and then the other three buses at 3.30. And that will take place from November 29th till school ends, I, I believe it's December 23rd. After we get back from the break, hopefully we've onboarded all of these extra bus drivers, we'll be back to normal. So we'll be back to 3 o'clock at the high school that the students will be able to take that late bus. Do I understand it's been an inconvenience? Yes. However, I can't control the lack of, of not having bus drivers, but we've been working on it, and I'm happy to say that we've made progress, and I know some of the high school students will be happy to hear that it's getting better for the short term, and we'll be back hopefully to normal when we get to uh, the beginning of, of January. Um, that's an important footnote for everybody to understand. Um, the bond project, um, as you are aware, board members in the community, we are in a, in a stage where we're under looking at punch list items, but there also are many items that are delayed because of the, uh, the issues that are going on with the supply chain. Uh, and products, even just making a product. So there are some areas in the, the high school that we've been able to get students back in those locations, but they are not completely finished. That does not mean that there are any the issues that they should be in there we're talking about. Uh, working on punchless items, we're talking about the music room, they have to finish the acoustic ceiling, and all that will be done during off hours um, as we move forward. Um, I also know and I clearly understand, I wish we had $200 million to do all the kind of work that needs to be done. But I, I just want to remind everybody, because when you start to go through punchless items and you know people start to comment on the, on, on the stuff that was done, we know we have further work to do. When we initiated this discussion back in 2018, and we involved parents, we involved administrators, we involved students, um, we made a decision to look at the arts, we made a decision to look at instructional area, we made a decision to look at security, and we made a decision to look at that, that back field. By no means do I understand, and I'm sure the next superintendent and this board or current board members understand, we have further work to do. And ultimately our goal is to be able to set up a capital reserve fund to do some of this work on an ongoing basis so that we're not waiting every 10 years to do a major product. So do I understand that there are some things that need to be done across the buildings? Yes. 
Are there some issues that we have to look at interior and exterior? Yes, and those conversations I'm sure will be had um, with this board moving forward um, as we look at phase two of the project um, over the next year and, and, and year and a half. But we do understand that we'd like to have a, a bucket of money that we can do everything, uh, you know, and, and but we will try to do what we can do over the next number of years. But suffice it to say, um, you know, we're, we're back in rooms and uh, we're, we're, we're getting there. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll be finishing up those, those punch list items. Um, also, don't forget, please, that um, next Wednesday is a half day, beginning of our Thanksgiving recess. Um, May, May Peck High School gets out at 10.15. May Peck Middle School, Lakeview and Full School get out at 11. And then Fulmer and Austin Road get out at 11.45. And just two last things, and this is, you know, I, I, I always hear about, we always talk about sports. Well, if you look at our paper and you look at some of the things that we do in our, in our May Impact News, it's not just about sports, it's about all the other great programs that are going on. Um, and, and, and people are right. We have to make sure that we talk about the comprehensive programs that we have here at May Impact High School. With that being said, that leads me into the following. Um, we're talking about, you know, the profile for Mayapac High School because every year we, uh, you know, we look at it and we refine it. And I asked uh, Mr. Delu to do a, a run on, I want to know how many students of this year's senior class have taken a college level course and or an AT. This is the highest number that we've had. 85% of this year's senior class has taken in its experience from freshman to senior year at least one college and or AP class. So that is a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment. <laughs> tremendous accomplishment. So to be very, very proud of the work that our students are doing, our, our, our teachers and our staff. It's a, it's, a, it's a great tribute to all the hard work that's happening and taking place. And then, um, if I can just see what I did. Now, last but not least, as we go into uh, the Thanksgiving season. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. It is hard to believe that three months of school has gone so fast that Thanksgiving is upon us. During the Thanksgiving season, it's important for us all to take a moment to recognize and reflect on all the accomplishments for which we should be grateful. We should be especially grateful for the dedicated students, faculty, parents, and the Hope Pack community members who have embodied our resilience as a school district. I am thankful for the efforts of our students put forward each and every day. We must continue to build their confidence and love of learning. I am so grateful for the work that our teachers, staff, and administration have done during these unprecedented times. It is their work, passion, and dedication that has allowed the May Impact Central School District to thrive. In closing, I would like to thank the community for their continued support in helping our children to become caring learners and for supporting our schools and programs. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Superintendent DiCarlo. Very informative. Hope everybody got a lot out of that one. Boy, I'll tell you. It was a lot of information, but, uh, but you know, how true on uh, where we are in society right now. And I can, I can, I know this whole TikTok thing is really a, really a problem to social media in general. So thank you again for that update. Uh, superintendent okay we're going to move over to our, our committee reports um, so uh, I'm the first one up here in HR so HR met last Tuesday uh, trustee Simone myself and trustee Savino uh, along with our superintendent of schools and our assistant superintendent for uh, human resources um, tonight you'll see uh, the uh, fruits of that labor um, on uh, for tonight's uh, HR agenda um, we will be um, we'll be approving this in a minute um, but uh, but it was uh, you know as you know at these at these meetings here you know we do deeper dives into uh, into personnel uh, you know issues and uh, and I think we really do a pretty good job with a fine you know really with a fine tooth comb to what we bring here to the board at the work session and to you to the public here tonight so I appreciate and thank the, uh, the Human Resource Committee for all that uh, the role that they do I'd like to turn it over to our senior trustee Lucy Masafra for her uh, finance report. Lucy. Can you hear me? The finance committee met on November 9th and in attendance was myself, Sandra Pavarsi, assistant superintendent of business, Lisa Zabriski, she is our uh, treasurer, uh, board members with myself, Ben DeLillo, Adam Savino, and Ray Mazzana. At the meeting, we reviewed the budget calendar for 2022 2023. And we will be approving that on tonight's agenda. Um, we also, part of that, we 
also reviewed uh, balance sheet requests for funds that we received for COVID, and we plan to be discussing that at our next meeting in further detail on December 6th. We also reviewed the current budget point in time versus budget and expenditures. Our next meeting is scheduled on uh, December 6th at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Masafra. And then let's uh, let's go over to our uh, policy committee and our vice president, Adam Savino. Adam. Good evening, everyone. Oh, that's loud. Sorry about that. Um, the policy committee met. Um, wow. Uh, uh, last week, uh, in attendance were President Mongan, uh, myself, Trustee Masafra. Uh, our legal counsel, our legal counsel, uh, Superintendent Carlo, and District Clerk Melody Lorac. We uh, reviewed Policy 6430, uh, staff participation in political actions. Um, we discussed that contractors are also to be included as they perform educational service with or in the presence of students. Uh, we also reviewed Policy 9140, uh, staff complaints. Uh, policy 5630, uh, which we're going to be, uh, we're going to be renumbered uh, to follow the digital numbers um, once the attorney reviews them, um, brings them back to the committee and, and the rest of the board. Um, we had uh, discussed change orders uh, specific to the bond, uh, policies um, surrounding that. And finally, um, Policy 6122 and 9140 again, staff complaints and grievances. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna streamline a little bit to uh, ensure that all employees have a uh, proper uh, reporting system. Um, these items will be are on the agenda for uh, vote later. Uh, we adjourned at 8:35. That is all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. And can we go over to? Uh, uh, our uh, ad hoc committee and our uh, chairman of the ad hoc, uh, Ben DeLulo. Ben. Yes. Okay, so on November 4th, Thursday, uh, the introductory meeting of the Educational Reform and Ad Advocacy Ad Hoc Committee uh, took place. Uh, we had 10 community members, one uh, person who had a potential conflict. I'm not going to go through the names. These minutes, by the way, are attached to the website. You can see them there. Uh, attending from the Board of Ed was myself, Mike Morgan, uh, Michael Simone, uh, Tanner had a conflict, uh, but I read a statement on his behalf. Uh, very quickly, when we went through, we talked about the goal of the committee, we went through the meeting ground rules, we reviewed a time, a, a plan and a timeline, uh, we introduced each other and why people were interested in joining the committee, and we did an exercise to Look at what the high level issues were. Um, and this very quickly, as you can imagine, what came up at the top of the list were COVID, COVID protocols and mask mandates. Uh, based on that and some other input we got during the week, uh, we gave the people a homework assignment to write up a statement and we're going to begin to uh, draft um, statements that would, would potentially be advocacy points further. Our next meeting is Thursday, December 9th uh, at the uh, PD room uh, from 7 to 8.30. Um, if people are interested, this is an open meeting. The committee is set. If people are interested in coming to attend and listen, uh, they're welcome to do that. But the committee is now set at the 10th table. I don't know if I want to add another word. Okay. Sorry. And, and of course, we want to make sure that we're as open and transparent as possible so you can always come and view the work that we do. Of course, anything final moving forward has to come to the board. That's just how ad hoc committees are. And it's also important that we get community input, the board's on board, whatever we come to. But again, there's a lot of really active community members on this committee. So even if you may not be on it and you can only come and listen, you can't speak, talk to your neighbors, talk to your to the community members on here if you have an issue that you want the committee to talk to. So there's still ways to get involved without being a committee member. You can go and watch, or you can always talk to the, one of the trustees or one of the, the community members on the committee. So there's a lot of ways to get involved with what we're doing. All right, thanks. 
All right, thank you, President Martin. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Vice President Savino has a uh, has an addendum to his uh, to his minutes for uh, policy, so I will turn it back to Vice President. Okay. Sorry for the confusion, everyone. Um, part of the uh, policy committee meeting also included the 7630 uh, construction policies. Um, in the detail, there, <clears throat> we had some discussions on the requirements of the policies, health and safety committee, um, requiring you to do walkthroughs and so on and so forth. Um, that's a work in progress. We're going to reconvene um, and have some updates for that in the future. Um, policy 2130 and 1312 E, um, if you're familiar with the policies at all, were actually duplicate policies. Um, so we will be rescinding um, 1312E. Uh, and then finally, the policy committee decided to, be, to change the subsequent numbers to the policies and we review in accordance with the sequence of all applicable policies. Um, it's been an ongoing process and we're finally uh, getting traction with it. So hopefully over the next year or so, we'll be all um, back in line uh, for easy viewing um, for everyone that's interested. That is all I promise. Okay. Yeah, I think it'll be easier to follow on the uh, on board docs and the uh, and the website when we get the numbers all in sequence, since we're transitioning from one uh, from one set of of uh, of policies over to the NISBA policy. So uh, I know that we've been working on that for well, I've been on the board for six years, and I think we've been working on it for five of the six years. So. Uh, hopefully we'll have that. Uh, hopefully we'll have that squared away in uh, uh, in, in shortcoming. So uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to uh, ask. We have a donation, and I'd like uh, Trustee Delulo uh, to please uh, read this evening's donation. Absolutely. All right. Resolved on the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby accepts a donation of five hundred dollars from the O'Brien Architecture. LLC to be used towards the Austin Road Garden at Austin Road Elementary School. So on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank O'Brien Architecture. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Thank you. So can I get a motion to accept the donation? So moved. Thank you, Trustee DeLillo. Can I get a second? Second. Trustee McDonough, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We have, uh, we have a consent agenda this evening. Uh, what I'd like to do right now is uh, just ask that we um, we have one uh, item uh, on uh, 5C. I'd like to table 5C. Uh, we have a special meeting coming up on the 30th, and we'll uh, we'll be able to rectify the uh, uh, the issue right there. So I'd like to remove remove that, and then um, and then ask everyone right now to uh, to um, approve uh, tonight's consent agenda. Can I get a motion to accept? Mr. President, Go ahead. which agenda item was it's, it? Uh, I believe it's 5C. It's the non-instructional. On page I it's, I it's on, on letters. Page oh, seven. I'm sorry. I, no, page oh, seven. Under, seven, oh, it's page seven. Under X. Yeah, seven fourteen. Yeah, page seven. Here we go. Yeah. 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 Page seven. Right So the whole section under C. On just, the just, just see. Yeah, we're gonna we'll, we table that. We're gonna move that over to the thirtieth. Is that in the motion to? Uh, table yes. That? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to approve the consent agenda with that removed, and then, and then we can do we'll uh, we'll we'll, we'll um, motion the table. Yeah, okay, we motion the table afterwards. Do we table first and then approve the consent agenda? You always have to table it first. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So, can I get a motion to table uh, uh, the five um, C? So moved. Thank you, Ben. Second. Second. Uh, Vice President Savino, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and now can I get a motion to accept this evening's consent agenda? So moved. Vice President Savino, second? Second. Trustee McCracken, all in favor? Aye. 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 Now the exciting part, which, uh, which we all love and, uh, and we look forward to, um, and we do, and, and we really do, and we appreciate that we have, uh, we have residents that would like to speak uh, uh, this evening. So I will turn it over to our uh, district clerk, Melody LaRocca. Melody has a, uh, has a list of people that will be speaking this evening. Melody. I have Ava. Come on up, Ava.
Can you hear me? Okay, so hello, ladies and gentlemen of the board. I'm Ava Van Ortwick, the junior class president here at Manhattan High School. I'm coming to you today with some pressing concerns about our district as a whole. To begin, I would like to address the school bathrooms at the high school, male and female, and student and teacher. I completely understand as a student the wear and tear of the school bathroom throughout the day. But speaking from experience, the second floor girls' bathroom rarely has two working soap dispensers, sinks, and even toilets with a lock and stall. The others, from what I've been told, are in the same position. With our school being renovated, compared to getting things like a new turf, issues like the bathrooms need to be addressed first. Second, the prioritization of the attention to our arts and music programs. I love the communities that have been formed around our football games. But while our athletes get recognized on the loudspeakers and on our website, our high achieving academic students and music students, as well as less popular sports, rarely get recognized. The music department just put on their first in-person indoor concert in almost two years. We have many students going to all state orchestras, and not once did I hear any of them recognized anywhere but last night at the concert. As well as the girls have cross-country teams got second in their league, and I didn't even know about that until yesterday when a friend told me. It's great that some of these uh, issues of attention are beginning to be expressed, but there's still a clear need for the advocacy and equity of all scholastic activities. Thirdly, the disrespectful treatment of the female population by teachers and administrators. From microaggressions to condescending comments to being flat out misogynistic, something has to change. From being told I'm pulling the woman card to being called emotional for answering a question in class. And these are just my own experiences. I can only imagine that if this is going on at Mayapak High School, there is more happening that students are not speaking up about. It's not just people being sensitive. It's about a basic expectation of mutual respect between teachers and students. Fourthly, the mental and emotional support for our students, specifically those who don't reach out, I know our guidance counselors and social workers are busy, but something has to bend so that students can make actual connections with their counselors instead of a five minute check in once a year. With nearly 1,500 students in our school alone, I get that that's a lot of help to give. But the students I'm surrounded with, like myself, need more emotional and mental support from those other than parents and friends, but someone who we can consistently count on for advice for our future. Decreasing support in recent years by not hiring an aid counselor has had an impact on student support. The need for support will only increase. The last issue I wanted to address is our buses, which thankfully have already been to began to be addressed at our school. I completely understand the shortage of buses, bus drivers, and everything in between in our district, as brought to my attention by our school newspaper, The Chieftain. So it's great that our high school students are finally going to have an appropriately timed late bus that won't discourage students from engaging in extracurricular activities that make for a well-rounded student and citizen of our community. I believe that all these concerns can be readily fixed. I even have my own proposition for all of them. These needs must be prioritized so that students and teachers alike can have a more equitable experience at Manitowoc High School. I have a platform as student body president to help push for the changes that most of our student body have been waiting for since middle school. I'm hoping that the board will use your influence to help facilitate these necessary and essential changes. Thank you so much for your time this evening, and I hope that we can partner in the future to make Mayapak High School a better place for all. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much, Ava. That was terrific. Thank you so much. Ava? Ava, can you hear me? No, that's okay. You can, you can just sign back down. So, Ava, um, very eloquent, very, very well spoken, and I commend you because you are a leader, and that's what leaders do. Leaders get up, and they talk about their feelings, they talk about their classmates, and, and kudos to you. That's an example of what May Impact is all about. So what I, I will do is I will reach out to you, if it wants to be you or the junior group of folks, and we'll sit down and we'll talk. Some of the things, some of your ideas that you have, there's some things that we can talk about because 
believe it or not, it's good timing. We're starting our budget for next year, and we can talk about some of these things. So my secretary, Melody Rocker, will email you, and we'll sit down and have a follow-up conversation, okay? And again, congratulations, young lady. That's a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Melody, next up. Good evening, Kate. Hi. How are you? Very good. It was a tough act to follow. Yeah, <laughs> really. Very well said. Um, so I'm Kate Borelli Bellantoni. My son Dylan is in kindergarten at Palmer Road. And I came here to speak of two issues. Um, one you already touched on, but I will start with my first. So I guess my question is who vets the books that are placed into our school library? Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen all the videos of parents coming to Board meeting, reading excerpts from books that are quite frankly just pornographic in nature and completely inappropriate for a child to read. I'm not talking about exploring gender or sexuality, but rather detailed descriptions of sex, rape, molestation, and the like. My oldest is only in kindergarten. God help what will be in the library by the time he hits high school if we don't have a clear screening process. process yet to be um, established. So can you touch on who's responsible for bringing the books in, uh, who scans the books before they hit the shelf in detail, and whether there's an online catalog for parents to be able to view what is um, available to their children? And this goes for all schools. So Mrs. Bellantoni, I, I, I suggest, because it's a lengthy conversation, that you reach out to this gentleman right here. He's our assistant superintendent for instruction, Mr. Michael Trauma. He will set up a meeting with you. He can explain to you what happens and what goes into it and how it happens. We'll talk to you a little bit about how books are selected as a part of our Leaders Widers workshop that we have, kindergarten and actually going right through the middle school and eighth grade, how those books are selected, process of how it's done, how it's incorporated, and then he can take you through how the high school selects what they do and, and what's there. Because it's a much lengthier conversation, but he can definitely take you through what exactly happens, how it happens, and then you know how it gets placed on the shelves. Okay, and I understand that, and I will take you, I, I will take you up on that. But I'm sure there's other parents too that are, are wanting to know this information. So, so you can you can meet with him first individually because you're brought up at, at, as that issue, and then as Mr. Trombley will be doing his recording as a part. Of presentation to the board. I'm sure the board would, you know, he could follow up with them also. And at that presentation, we'll make sure yeah, that the community gets it. Yeah? Okay. And just, I just want to make sure, you know, just, I'm just, I'm honestly curious. No, I have understand. You guys, have, have you guys seen these videos, read these excerpts? Yes. Yes. And right over in Pump Valley. Yes. Our neighbor, so I'm just curious. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Next up. I mean, I can. I mean, I'm, I can speak uh, and speak over here. Um, I mean, I'm. We're not. I, I can speak for the board. I believe. I, we're not. We're not interested in having vaccination sites here at the school. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a personal. It's a personal choice. Uh, it's something that uh, that goes with your with with your pediatrician and your doctor and and, and your family. Um, you know. I mean, I think that's that's just as clear as it can be. I mean, this is you know this is education. This is learning. You know that's you know. I mean, you know, vaccine, vaccinations, personal choice, and uh, you know, I know that we have mandates that are all around us, but uh, but I don't think you'll see that over. I don't think you'll see that over here. That's not something that we're interested in. We're interested in education. All right, I 
Thank you very much, Ms. Brown. That's it? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay, so um, okay, so that's that's it. And I, I once again, as you've heard me before, I thank everybody uh, for the um, uh, th that has the uh, the courage to come up here and speak to us. Um, I know it's difficult, it's tough, but uh, as you can see, it's a. I mean, we're you know we're all ears right over here, and we all want to do what's right for our you know for our for our schools community and our community. So again, I commend everybody that spoke spoke tonight and reach out to the people that are out on the. Uh, uh, that are out on the airways over there that uh, that it's a you know it's a friendly environment over here and if you feel like you want to come down and spend some time over here in a meeting come on down so we thank you very much um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to motion we're gonna go, so we're going to motion to go into executive session um, right now um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to motion to go into executive session What's the reason? for um, for uh, to discuss personal Sal? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So get a motion, please. So moved. So moved. Vice President Savino. Second. Second. Vice President. Uh, um, Trustee McDonough. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it.